Today we're going to look at VLOOKUP in Google Sheets. So VLOOKUP is used when you want to find a value associated with a certain key. So we're going to use this as our key, the standard plan, and we want to return the price from our price table over here. So let's go ahead and start with a basic formula and then we'll run through some different use cases. So start with the equal sign, the lookup, and open parentheses. If it doesn't pop up immediately, you can click on the question mark when Google has a little helper pop up here and it tells you the basic structure of the formula. So first we start with the search key. And so this is what we're using to search in the data. So the search key is standard plan over here. So I can either type V3 or I can simply click on it, click comma, and then now the next part that's highlighted is the range. And so this is where we're looking to find the data that we want to return. And so this is from our source data. And so you can click and drag again over here. And so what we're looking for is we want to find standard return price. So we need columns F and G. So I can just simply select these two. And you can see it selects F and G there. Hit comma again. And then we have the next criteria. So one thing to keep in mind is VLOOKUP is going to look in the first range that you select. So if we change this to D, it's not going to be able to find the value. So where you want to find the key needs to be the first column of the range that you select. All right, so let's go to the next. The index is the column that you want to return. So it starts with one. So if we returned one, it'd be the same value. So we want the next one, which is price. So that is column two. And then the final is this criteria of whether the data is sorted. And so we'll go through this here in a minute with numbers. But in general, for text, you want to use false. And so that's all you need to use the VLOOKUP formula. We have our search key again. We have the range that we're searching inside, the column that we're returning, and then whether it is sorted or not, in which in this case, it is false. And so you can see standard is 69, and that's what we're returning. So to test this, let's go ahead and select business. You can see now it's returning 119. Again, enterprise, and it's returning 159. So often you may want to drag this formula down to be able to use it on multiple rows. So if you have the entire row selected, you can just drag this down. And you can see here we have a NA error. And that is because if you have a blank, if you look up, still trying to look it up, but I can't find it. And so one way you can handle this is you can put an if error around this, drag it down again, and now that NA error is gone. Or you can put a new one, no result found, for a custom error message in this if error. Drag it down again, no result found. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this happens a lot. Let's say we had our F3 to G, did a fixed range, did 18. Now, if we drag this down, we're going to see it says for standard, no result found, even though we can see standard over here. So one thing to keep in mind is if you specify the range with the row numbers, if you drag it down, F3 to G18, F4 to G18, if we click on that, Google highlights, and it shows us a standard is actually outside of the range that we're now searching in. So if you have the row numbers in here, you're just going to want to click on this. If you hit F4, it adds these dollar signs in front of each part of the range. So the column, the row, column, and row, adds the dollar sign. And this tells Google, if you drag it around, to not change that range reference. So we have F3 through G18. If we drag this down, we can see now it remains fixed. All right, so that's the basics of VLOOKUP. Let's run through a number of different cases. Uh, originally, you may be using VLOOKUP, and hopefully, you get a lot more comfortable with it along the way. So another thing that you may often run into is that your data is actually on a different tab than where you want to reference it from. And so let's go ahead and look real quick at how to do this. So we're going to use the same structure, VLOOKUP. Our search key is standard, hit comma to go to our next criteria. And so now we need our range. And so I put this data on the next tab. 
called data. And so I can click on this and do the same thing again and select the data range where I want to look it up, comma. Now, one thing you'll notice if you look at this data set, I have the plan in the first column. We have this product ID and our price in the third column. So this one, we actually want the third column, not the second column. And again, we'll do our fault to make sure we're turning the correct row. And now you can see we're returning our price from the next tab. And so you can do the same thing if you want to drag us down. Um, this one, we don't have a fixed row reference. So we could drag this down We can drag this down as well. And you can see that because we didn't add the rows in here, the row numbers, it, it stays fixed. All right, so let's go ahead and jump to another case you may have, very similar, is if your data is actually on a different spreadsheet. So we have it located over here on this data. And so what we're gonna do is we'll copy this URL from this spreadsheet, come back to our source. We're gonna write a VLOOKUP like we normally do, our search key, comma, and now for our range, we need to somehow reference this. So I'm not gonna go great detail on how this works, but we're gonna use an import range. We're going to do double quotations, copy that URL, finish it with another double quotations mark to wrap that URL, comma, and then we need to specify the tab and the range we're going to reference. So I'm gonna do another double quotation mark. And so if we go back and look at here real quick, our tab name is data, and then our range is maybe A through C. So if we go back here, we type in data, exclamation point, and then we can do A colon C and close our import range formula. So this is our import range formula, gonna pull that data from the other spreadsheet. So again, we have on the third row, if we go back here and look, the third row we want to return, or third column we want to return, and then false, hit enter. And what you're often gonna see on an import range at first is this ref error, and it's gonna give you this notice you need to connect these sheets. So one thing to keep in mind is this won't happen if you have anyone with the link can view, but since that's not what we have here, we have restricted, then only if we authorize access will we be able to do this. So all we gotta do here is click allow access, and then this will show up from our other sheet. All right, so to chug along, let's look at our sorted data set. And so let's say someone spent $500 and we want to know what plan they qualify for under that amount. Or maybe this is a percentage discount or whatever it is, but we have 500 and we want to find where in this range it is. So one thing to keep in mind when you set this up, the VLOOKUP is only actually going to look in the first column. So this column is only here for reference. That's why I don't have anything in here. We could put a thousand, we could put whatever in here, but ultimately in this VLOOKUP, it's only gonna be looking at this and determining where it falls in that lineup. So let's go ahead and make our formula. So VLOOKUP, it's gonna be the same as we did before. Here's our key and we can grab our data range. And again, we want the plan. So we're gonna take our third column and this time, instead of false, we're actually going to do true. And so if we look here, 500 would fall in between 400 and 599, so that's silver. Let's change it up to 601, and it turns to gold. So keep in mind, we actually don't need these numbers. What this VLOOKUP is looking at is where this falls under here. So if it is 400, it's going to be silver. If it's four or one or greater, it'll still be silver. It's up till, let's see, 599. Still be silver. We do 600 and changes to gold. So basically, this is the point at which it transitions to the next plan. So basically, from zero to 399.99 is going to be bronze. From 400 to 599.99999 is going to be silver and so forth. So if we do a thousand, it's going to show up as platinum. We do a million, so it's still gonna be platinum. All right, so that's how sorted works. So just remember, all you have to do is change that false to true, and then you can 
look in a tiered database like this. So now what happens if you have a number, but you don't want to sort, you want the exact match. Let's look in here. We're going to do basically what we did for a text lookup. So we'll use search key, search this, third column, and false. That's all you have to do. So if we go to 1002, it goes to 119, 1003, it goes to 159. And just to show that this works no matter which way it is. Now 1003 is standard and 69, we go 1001, it's 159. So when you do this false, it's going to look for exact match. Whereas when you do true, it's going to look for that sorted match like it does here. All right, so moving on to the next one. So you can do a wildcard match. So let's say you just have the product ID. You can do a wildcard match. So you can take this cell and use this and ampersand symbol to add something. And so we're going to add this asterisk at the end, which is a symbol for a wildcard. And this means basically what's telling Google, look for A with anything following. And then we're going to look in this range, three and false. And we find we wind up with 69. So if we put in B, now it's finding this one, and C, it's finding this one now. So the wild card you can put before or after. Let's say it was A, B, and C. So it's actually at the end. We could switch this around, put the asterisk at the beginning, and the ampersand, and now we can still find this, even though it's at the end. This may be useful, maybe if you're looking for a last name, something like that, in a data set. And so that's how you can find it just like that. You use the wildcard, and you can use the ampersand. Another thing you can do is you can put this in directly. You just put an asterisk B. It's just going to look for that, and that's actually not tied then to this. It's just tied to what you have in there. So if you want it tied to this cell, you can do this ampersand and at that cell, and you can put A, B, and so forth or you can put it directly inside. All right, so let's look at another one. So let's say we have, we're looking at the standard plan. If we start to do our VLOOKUP, we'll notice that our data set is backwards. And so maybe sometimes your data maybe switched around and it's not something you can fix. So how can you still find this? Because if we do this, we're not gonna be able to find it. We're gonna have an error because it can't find standard in the price list. So we're gonna use a little cool trick here called an array literal. And so we use these curly brackets. And then what we're gonna do inside these curly brackets, let me just get rid of this real quick. Inside these curly brackets, we want to basically make an array. And so I'm actually gonna do this out here first. I'm gonna take this F column, comma, E column, another curly bracket. And if you look what we did here, is it reversed the columns. So it put F first, and then put E next, which is how we need it for our VLOOKUP. So we can just simply take this formula that we just made here. I'm gonna copy this. And I'm gonna replace my EF here with my reversed formula. So you can see now it works, because basically what we've done is we've taken the F column and put it in front of the E column. Another place this might be useful is if you have a data set that has a ton of columns, because if you've looked at what we've been doing so far, we have to count how many columns over. And so maybe if you have like, you know, 56 columns and you have to count one, two, three, and so forth all the way across, it can be really hard to, or take some time to, to count, especially if you're building a bunch of formulas. So this is a way you could trick this. And so for example, we can just actually flip this around and this doesn't work here, obviously, but we can basically look, actually, let's go back to one where I can actually show you. On this one, we can do the same thing. Let's just make this simple, F to F, and then G to G. And you can see now, even though we're in the same order, we can use this array literal 
And so then this could be our second column, which could be DB or something like that. Obviously we don't have that in here, but that's just a quick trick if you don't want to count 56 or whatever it is to get to the next one. All right, so that's right to left. Now what if you want to return multiple columns? So we're going to use the lookup, search key, and search in here. So what we want to return is our product ID and our price. So we're going to use that array literal again, and we want two and three. And then false. So if we click enter, it's kind of working. We actually want the normal range there, or the normal number format. But we're not returning our price. And so what we want to do is actually wrap this in array formula. And lo and behold, now we have both columns actually returning in using one formula. So if you look here, there's actually no formula. If I take this formula, cut it, you can see that both cells are being populated by this one formula. And so you can see we're using this array literal formula again. And so this is telling Google we want columns two and three. All right, so now you've been introduced to array formula. We're going to go ahead and jump to our next one. And what we're going to do here is use one formula to fill three rows. So let's go ahead. We're going to start with array formula. And then we'll put our VLOOKUP in here. And since we want all three of these, let's go ahead and select those. And now let's go ahead and get our data set. Let's just go ahead and grab these columns here. And let's grab a price, faults, and done. So now we're looking at these three rows. We could do this all the way down. If you had a bunch more, you can see we don't have anything over here. So it's returning a false. So we could do this if error here if we wanted to. And then if we added something else, more data, you can see it's going to return that for each one we have in there. So that's how you use an array formula to use one formula to populate all the way down. And so again, we take this formula and cut it. You can tell that everything is coming from this one formula. All right, folks, that's it for today. Hopefully that really stretched your knowledge of VLOOKUP and gave you a bunch of new useful tools and tricks to be able to use VLOOKUP in your own project. Thank you very much. See you again soon.